Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 through 58, and Romans chapter 8, verse 37. From the 25th chapter of the book of Isaiah, the 7th and 8th verses. And God will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people, and the veil that is spread over the nations. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 54 through 58. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For the sake of emphasis, let us read from Isaiah 25. Verse 8, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away from off all faces all tears. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55. So when this corrupt shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Verse 57, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us reason together for a few moments from this subject. Conquering with Christ. From victory to victory. Conquering with Christ. From victory to victory. We repeat that after me, conquering with Christ from victory to victory. We are blessed on this glorious day to stand on these grounds in the sunlight, under the canopy of the endless skies, in defiance of the efforts of Satan to literally shut down the church. This is our seventh month that God has given us grace to continue to lift up the name of Jesus in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. We are here simply by our presence to let the enemy know we have the victory. We do know that Satan has designs on every one of us. 
Not only does God have a purpose for you, but Satan also has a purpose. He has a plan for your life. Satan's plan, as Jesus says, that he is a thief that only comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. As with any thief, a thief is not going to rob you unless he believes you have something of value. What is it that you have that the thief wants to steal from you? Have you done an evaluation of your worth lately? Have you had an appraisal of how much God has invested in you lately? You are worth more now than you've ever been. What is your value? Jesus gives us an estimate of the value of a human being by raising a question. What does it profit one to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what can one give in exchange for his soul? Using the estimate of Jesus Christ, you are more valuable than the entire world. Not just the wealth of the banks of the United States of America, not just all of the gold, silver, diamonds, iron, or uranium that's in Africa, not just all of the wealth that is in Swiss banks, not just all of the fashion that's in Italy, all of the custom-made watches in Switzerland, not just the glory of Rome, not just the splendor of Paris, but you are worth more than all of the world put together. What Jesus is saying is that he loves you enough that he would give his life, even if there was only one person. Jesus died just for you. Why don't you help me with this? Look at somebody and tell them Jesus gave his life just for you. Jesus loves you because he knows what he has placed within you. He has given you his image. You are created in the image of God. And because you are in God's image and his likeness, you are one of God's offspring. The Bible teaches us that we are the offspring of God. God is the father of spirits. Even by your very birth and nature, God is the one who breathed into your nostrils the breath of life. You became a living soul. You couldn't live if you didn't have a little God in you. You couldn't move if you didn't have a little God in you. You couldn't get up out of the bed if you didn't have a little God in you. You couldn't even lift your hands if you didn't have a little God in you, that's the reason why you shouldn't give up on witnessing or praying even for the worst sinner. Because as long as there's breath in you, there's some God in you. You can't live unless God lets you live. You can't move unless God allows you to move. The Bible declares in him we live, move, and have our being. Every sinner has God invested in them, and that's why God loves sinners, because God knows that he put, even in a sinner, the capacity to be redeemed through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, that is why our study of the word this morning helps us to realize why God has invested so much in us. When God made you, he made a masterpiece. The word of God says we are his workmanship. Whatever God does, he signs his name to it. The signature of God is upon every blade of grass. The signature of God is upon every wave on the sea, every grain of sand by the seashore. The signature of God is upon every leaf, upon every tree. The signature of God is upon your life. If it hadn't been for the Lord, where would we be? When God made you, he didn't make junk. He made 
a masterpiece. Why don't you help me with this? Encourage somebody. Look at somebody and tell them you are a masterpiece. Well, sometimes you may not know you're a masterpiece because the thief has gotten to you. And when the thief gets to you, he tries to mar the image of God that you are. He tries to defeat the purpose that God has placed upon your life. He seeks to blind you to the reality of God's revelation. But the touch of the master's hand would take a piece of junk and restore it to its original glory. I was lost, but the master touched me. Now I'm found. I was blind, but the hand of the master touched me. Now I can see. I was a mess. But the touch of the master's hand made me a masterpiece. You are God's best. I wish I had some help up in here today. Don't allow the enemy to think less of yourself than you are. You have to have healthy self-esteem. I am who God says I am. That is why the enemy wants to come to you and lie to you to your face and tell you you ain't nothing. You ain't going to never be nothing. Satan is a liar and the father of it. It takes Jesus to tell you who you are. It takes Jesus to tell you what he's placed within you. That's why that word education is so significant. Education comes from the term educare, which means to bring forth. A teacher has to have enough faith in their students to believe that I can bring forth a doctor out of you. I can bring forth a scientist. I can bring forth an engineer. God believes in you enough that when he sends the preaching and teaching of the gospel, he knows he can bring forth a witness. He can bring forth an evangelist. He can bring forth a saint. He can bring forth a victor. He can make you more than a conqueror. Come on, help me give God praise here today. Yes, Isaiah speaks with great clarity when he proclaims how much God thinks of us in the 25th chapter, the 7th and 8th verses. God promises to rebuke in this mountain the veil that is cast upon the faces of his people. God says concerning those who would believe his word that for your sake death is swallowed up in victory. Somehow Paul caught a hold of that message of Isaiah, and he wouldn't let it stay in the Old Testament. He had to bring it home in his theological apologetics and remind us that this corruptible is going to put on incorruptible. That is what salvation is about. The word salvation and the study of it is called soteriology. Salvation is the progressive work of the Holy Spirit in your life. It's not a neat little package that God drops off to you, but it is a daily and progressive work of the Holy Spirit. That is why we recognize that salvation involves several tenses. Tenses mean that God is still moving forward, engaging in a daily work and ministry in you through the Holy Spirit. Tenses mean different times, present tense, now, future tense, I will be or shall be, progressive tense, I am being. At times, Paul says, I am saved, as in I am justified by faith and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. At other times, he says, I am being saved, which is the progressive work of the Holy Spirit in you that is known as sanctification. This progressive tense means that God is by no means finished with you yet. I know that every now and then you hear people raising the question, about eternal security or once saved, always saved. But they overlook the tenses involved in salvation. When you say once saved, always saved, to what tense or work of salvation are you referring? Do you mean justification, sanctification, or glorification? I know you don't mean glorification because none of us have experienced that level of salvation yet, which is why Paul says, I shall 
be saved. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 13, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You got to know your tenses. What do you mean I shall be saved when I'm already justified? I'm being sanctified. What does I shall be saved mean? That means your salvation is not yet complete and will not be complete until you see Jesus face to face. I dare you to shout. I think I need to take my time and talk about this process of salvation. Justification is that instantaneous work of the Holy Spirit that allows you to say on the spot, I am saved. That doesn't mean you're in heaven yet, but it means heaven is in you. That doesn't mean you've arrived yet, but it means God has begun a good work in you, and he will not stop until that work is completed. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. That means every day God got to work on you some more. Justification is instantaneous. The moment that an individual believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, having heard the gospel preach, having repented of their sin, you are covered right on the spot. Justification is just as if I'd never sinned. It means my conscience is clear. It means my slate is is clean. It means nobody can condemn me. Didn't you read that in Romans 8 and 1? There is. Therefore now that's the present tense. No condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Justification means that even though you were guilty of the charge because you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Even though you are guilty Jesus dropped the charges. And because he dropped the charges, that means that his blood covers your sins. Come on, help me give God some praise here today. Jesus has a right to drop the charges because the Bible says, if we sin, we have an advocate, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. An advocate means we have an attorney. We have a lawyer. Jesus is our lawyer. And let me tell you, in these litigious times, you need a lawyer. And Jesus is not just a good lawyer. He's the best lawyer. One of the things about Jesus' ability as an attorney is that Jesus will clear you and never charge you a dime. What kind of lawyer is that? That gets you off from death row because that's what you're guilty of. The wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life, which means I should have been dead. But not only did Jesus forgive me, he canceled my appointment with death. Not only did he cancel my appointment with death, but he gave me everlasting life, which means I'm going to outlive this body. I'm going to outlive pain. I'm going to outlive sickness. I'm going to outlive trouble. Come on, help me give God some praise today. Uh, why don't you look at somebody and tell them, I got a good lawyer. Because the fact of the matter is, every client that Jesus has ever had was guilty. I didn't get much on that. Let me take my time and say that. I said every client that Jesus ever had was guilty. Are you, why are you saying guilty? All have sinned. That means guilty and come short of the glory of God. David said, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Guilty. You didn't have to commit any sin. It was in you. You were born with a sinful nature, which means every human being needs salvation. Every human being needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every human being needs to be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. There is room at the cross for you. 
Jesus is still inviting guilty clients. I don't care what you've done in the past. Bring your guilty self to Jesus. Come with drugs in your system. Show up with alcohol on your breath. Show up with failure in your life. Jesus is your lawyer. And when Jesus is your lawyer, when demons come after you to claim you and destroy you, he cancels demons' assignment. He cancels generational curses. I don't care how long a curse has been in your family. I don't care how long disease has been in your DNA. When lawyer Jesus takes your case, he then gives you retroactive grace. Uh, let me hear somebody say retroactive grace. Now, retroactive grace means that God doesn't just save me henceforth, but he saves me hither too. Now, you may not be able to say amen, but I know this a little heavy. Don't, they're just say, hmm. The King James Version uses these terms, hither to and henceforth. The word hither to means up until now. The word henceforth means from now on. When God saves you, he doesn't just save you from now on. But because grace is retroactive, he allows the cup of salvation to run over and he deals with things from your past. Don't you realize spirits from your past will try to follow you up into the present? Don't you know that guilt from your past will wake you up in the wee hours of the morning? Don't you know that addiction from your past will try to condemn you and destroy your future? When you get saved, when you confess Jesus Christ, if you've been a smoker, you don't lose your desire to smoke just because you just confessed Jesus Christ. I dare you to shout. That's the reason why salvation is progressive. It involves several tenses. When you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, you might come to the altar high. That means you're addicted. There's some stuff in your system that keeps calling you by your name. Even though you are justified and God has forgiven you, you got a battle on your hand to conquer the desires of your flesh. You can't conquer yourself. You can't conquer anything and anybody else you got to get victory in you first if i transgress the law if i do those things that i condemn paul says i make myself a transgressor how you gonna save somebody else and you ain't even save yourself how you gonna encourage somebody else and you having a pity party yourself how you gonna Help somebody else and you can't even help yourself. Are you going to smile at somebody else and you can't get a smile in your own face or in your heart? You got to conquer yourself, conquer your doubts, conquer your fears, conquer your habits, conquer your anxieties. And when God conquers the devil in you, then he'll use you to conquer it in somebody else. It's got to begin in you, Lord, send revival, but let it begin in me, God, send power, but let me experience it. I can't help others if I can't help myself. Are you going to charge somebody else's battery or give them a boost when your battery is almost dead? If you can't hardly crank your own car, you don't need to be getting no booster cable talking about, let me give you a boost. A whole lot of folk are just barely making it just barely putting one foot in front of the other can't take it if somebody talk about them somebody lie on them they ready to give up you ain't got no battery to charge nobody else if you can't even take it somebody look at you funny you ready to fly over the handle that's because you need some work even the song says please be patient with me god is not through with me yet. Let's get this straight about salvation. Yes, you've been justified when you confess Christ, but you got to stick with the sanctifying process. You took a bath last, last week, yesterday, that's good, but that don't cover for the day. There's something under your arm called must, which means you conquered it yesterday, but you better go back and get that soap. 
You better go back and get that deodorant because today is a whole different situation. And please don't put on Chanel number five and you ain't had no life board number one. The progressive work of sanctification means, yes, I live right yesterday, but not only did God meet me with new mercies, compassions, and loving kindness, but doubt was knocking at the door. Fear was knocking at the door. Anxiety, trouble, stand me in the face. You better get some new mercy because the devil said, I didn't destroy you yesterday, but I'm coming back today. That's the reason why you got to conquer with Christ and move from victory to victory because the hymn says each Victory will help you another to win. Victory is not a reason for you to wrap back and say, oh, I did it that time. Because that's what the devil wants you to do is rest on your laurels and act like you got it made so he can slap you right upside your head. You got an enemy that wants a rematch. He knows you stomped his head last time, but he said, I'm coming back at you again. And the next time I come at you, I'm not going to be wearing what I had on last time. I'm not going to look the same way. I'm not going to be acting. I'm not using the same approach. You have an adversary, the devil, that is seeking to destroy you. And if he didn't do it before, he's waiting on you down the road. But what he doesn't know is he can't destroy you without coming through Jesus. Jesus has covered you with his blood. Jesus touches you every day. Jesus gives you his mercy every morning. I don't know what you dreamed about last night, but when you wake up, mercy. Let me hear somebody say mercy. Come on, lift that hand and say mercy. I don't care if you are justified. Sanctification says you need fresh mercy today. You need fresh all today because you got to move from victory to victory. Not just I had the victory or I have the victory, but the Bible says he keeps on giving us the victory. Thanks be to God which giveth. That means he didn't just give you the victory one time, but he keeps on giving you the victory. The Bible says he always causes us to triumph in Christ. Let me hear somebody say always. That is why you got to speak victory in and over every situation. I don't care how bad you feel, speak victory. I don't care how much you are challenged, speak victory. Victory. I don't care tears in your eyes. Speak victory. Don't talk defeat. Don't talk confusion. Don't talk discouragement. Didn't you hear it in the prayer this morning? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for my heavenly home when Jesus is my portion? Why don't you help me give God some praise? Jesus is mine, and because he's mine, I've got a right to be blessed. Because he's mine, I've got a right to be healed. Because he's mine, I've got a right to be victorious. Because he's mine, I've got a right to prosper. Because he's mine, I've got a right to be the head and not the tail. Jesus is mine. Come on, help me give God praise here today. Yes, we are conquerors with Christ. We are better together. This is why when the Bible says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That means you can't do it without Christ. Well, how long have you been with Christ according to retroactive grace? You didn't just get with him today, but faith in Christ means that God gives you a retroactive ministry that actually takes you back to the cross. Retroactive means that even though there are things in my past that would destroy me, when retroactive grace is upon my life, he takes my sins and casts them in a sea of forgetfulness. He removes them as far as the east is from the west. And because of that, my conscience is clear. That frees me to look up. If grace were not retroactive, I'd still be looking back over my shoulder, wondering what's going to creep up on me. But when God gives you armor, he never gives you anything for your back. 
He gives you the breastplate of righteousness. That's for the front. He gives you the shield of faith. That's for the front, the helmet of salvation. For the top, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. For the bottom, your loins girt about with truth. That covers you inside. But as far as your back, he doesn't give you anything back there because God's got your back. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here today. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, God's got your back. That means you don't have to walk around wondering what's going to ease up on you because the Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That means that's, that's what God put at your back. Goodness and mercy is chasing after you instead of God letting curses from your past, curses from generations ago come after you. God says, I just canceled that and now I got something else chasing you. Goodness and mercy running after you, chasing you down. God's got a blessing chasing you. God's got favor running behind you. God has miracles right now that are running after you. You are blessed above, beneath, all around, throughout. You are more than conquerors and you are moving from victory to victory. Let me hear somebody say from victory to victory. This progressive work of sanctification, Paul puts it like this, I die daily. To die daily means what Jesus says, if you're going to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me daily. Jesus does not want you to be a Sunday Christian. I know we're here today on Sunday, but actually he wants you to follow him every day. Now, seven days without prayer does not just make one week W-E-E-K, but it makes one week W-E-A-K. So you can't just pray when you get in trouble. Don't just pray when things go wrong. But in order to be proactive in your walk with Christ, you ought always to pray. Because if you don't, you will faint. God rebukes spiritual fainting spells. For the enemy wants to creep up on you. But because God is with you, when the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, God lifts up a standard against him. Which means that instead of you having to bounce back from defeat all the time, God takes you from Victory to victory. In fact, your name is victory. I wonder if you change your name. You see, you used to say, I am an addict. You used to say, I am lost. You used to say, I'm blind. You used to say, I'm sick. You used to say, I'm broke. And whatever you say I am, whatever comes behind that begins to bond with your life. You got to stop saying I am things. That you don't intend to become. You got to stop saying. I am discouraged. Change your name to. Victory. My name is. Victory. Come on look at somebody and ask them. Have you changed your name? You see. There was a time when. If a man and woman. Got married. Uh, they had to deal with a legal name change. I know now people tend to keep their own identity. But I'm from the old school. When I met Lady Priscilla, I wanted her to become a Felton. And so she used to be a hearse. But God gave me the right legally. To make her into a Felton. Now she might say Priscilla Hearst. But somewhere in there Felton has got to show up. Her mom and dad who were married for 61 years were Hearst. She's from a family of 12 children in Canada. 
but somehow Felton covers all of that. And when I got married to Jesus, Jesus gave me the right to use his name. Because I don't pray in the name of Felton. Because I can't get nothing from heaven in Felton's name. I can't heal anybody in Felton's name. I can't lay hands on the sick and they recover in Felton's name. Felton ain't never died on the cross. Felton has never been to hell and gotten up with all power in his hand. But because I'm married to Jesus, I can use his name. In fact, the family name is Jesus. For Ephesians chapter 3 says, Of him the whole family of heaven and earth is named. The angels come under the name Jesus. The Father comes under the name Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes under the name Jesus. The Father won't even answer your phone call unless you say, In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost will not invest his power in you except you seek him in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the one that died for me. Jesus is the one that loved me. Understand that it was not the Father who died on the cross because the Father has a different personality. You ain't going to never get close enough to the Father to spit in his face. Because Yahweh is a consuming fire. You can't even look at the sun directly without it damaging your eyes. And God is more glorious than 10,000 suns. You can't approach the presence of God, Yahweh, and not be adversely affected. Which is the why the Bible said no man has seen God at any time if you want to see God God got to wrap himself up in Jesus you can't stand the power that scooped out the seas with its hand you can't stand the power that makes tornadoes twist and hurricanes roll you cannot engage the power that makes the earth to quake or causes wildfires to burn millions of acres of land that's why the bible says the foolishness of god is wiser than men and the weakness of god is stronger than men you can't even approach God in his power. You don't want to talk to God when he's twisting in a tornado. You better find somewhere to hide. You don't want to try to hold a conversation with God when the hurricane is packing winds of 150 miles per hour. You don't want to talk to God when lightning is flashing and thunder is rolling. Even the old folks said that when it's thunding and lightning, you better go somewhere and sit down because God is working. If you want to approach God, you've got to approach him in his weakness. And that's where Jesus come in. For even though he was in the form of God, he adopted our weakness, which means he took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself unto death, even the death of the cross. You can't be on a cross without getting weak. You can't have nails in your hands without getting weak. You can't have nails in your feet without getting weak. You can't have thorns in your brow without becoming weak. But Jesus shows weakness over strength. Jesus shows suffering over despair. Jesus shows weakness over power. He could have wiped out the world. He could have wiped out every human being. Wasn't enough people to kill. 
He said, my father will give me more than 12 legions of angels. But what's the use? One angel can kill 185,000 men at one time. According to Isaiah 37, 36, when God sent one angel to protect Jerusalem, when Sennacherib surrounded the city, Jesus said, I can get 12 legion. If we multiply 12 legion, well, one legion is 6,000. 6,000 times 12 is 72,000. That's 72,000 angels, each with the deadly capacity of killing 185,000 men each. That means 13 billion with a B. 13 billion people would have died with just one prayer from Jesus. Jesus could have exercised his strength, could have exercised his wrath, but he chose to become weak. He let sinful men take his life. He let evil men spit in his face. He let ungodly men put him on a cross. He let men seal him in the tomb. Because Jesus wanted us to be able to approach him. He's not approachable in his strength. But when he's weak, I can talk with him. When he's vulnerable, I can touch the hem of his garment. I can't touch the hem of a hurricane without my life being in danger. I can't touch the hem of a tornado without being at risk. But when Jesus put on a baby's flesh, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, he allowed me to touch him. For the Bible says we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. The way to deal with fear is not to deny it. The way to deal with fear is not to say you don't have it. Courage is not the absence of fear, but courage is the mastery of fear. Courage means I got fear under the blood of Jesus. Courage means I got fear beneath the cross. Fear is underneath my feet. In my fears, I'm more than a conqueror. In my storms, in my trouble, in my challenges, I'm more than a conqueror. In order to conquer, you got to keep your partner with you, who is Jesus Christ. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I'm like a ship without a sail. Oh, oh, without him, I'm drifting in a sea with no direction. Without him, I can't go to sleep at night. Without him, I can't wake up in the morning. Oh, oh, without him, can't even lift my hand. Without him, I can't open my mouth. But with him, nothing is impossible. With him, nothing can defeat me. With him, nothing can destroy me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Victory is a launching pad. Victory gets you ready for the next fight. Victory prepares you for the next engagement. Every round goes higher. Somebody help me say higher. Higher. Oh, oh higher. Oh, Lord, Jesus will take you higher. Jesus will lift you up. I'm so glad.
Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Jesus picked me up. Jesus turned my life around. Jesus shed his power. Jesus shed his anointing. Jesus is with me, for he made me a promise. Lo, I am with you. Come on and encourage somebody and tell them God is with you. God is in you, walking through you. God's behind you. God's in front of you. God's underneath you like rivers of living water. He's flowing out of your belly. Let it flow. Oh, Lord. I said, let it flow. Let it flow. Let praises flow. Let anointing flow. Let witness flow. Let power flow. Let it flow. Oh, Lord. Come on and help me give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, let it flow hallelujah let victory flow let glory flow let joy flow and when God puts it deep down in your belly when God puts it in your bones when God seals it in your spirit nothing can choke it out of you nothing can take it from you God has given you power greater than yourself and because he's in you you are stronger than you even know you are you have more power than you ever dreamed for the song says I'm learning to lean on Jesus finding more power than I've ever dreamed I'm learning to lean for the Bible says lean not unto your own understanding you gotta trust in the Lord with all your heart don't lean on your ability don't lean on pride don't lean on money don't lean on things but lean and depend on Jesus if you burden lean on him if you're discouraged lean on him if you got problems lean on him if you can't explain it lean on him he's waiting on you put your weight on him cast all your cares on Jesus for he cares for you come on and help me tell somebody lean on Jesus oh Lord oh lean on Jesus he can take it everybody can't handle your problems everybody can't handle your story everybody's not strong enough to deal with your failures everybody's not strong enough to deal with your weakness but Jesus said I can handle it Jesus so you can talk to me I won't put you down I won't condemn you I won't put your business on the sideboards of life just a little talk with Jesus will make it all right come on and help me say it's all right Come on, help me give God some glory. I said, it's all right. It's all right. Jesus made it all right. Jesus defeated sin, death, hell, and the grave. Jesus rebuked the adversary. Jesus has sent his anointing, and the anointing destroys the yoke. And every time you lift up the name, Jesus, you go up with it. If you want to go higher, take the name. Jesus is above every problem, above death, above sickness. 
sickness, above COVID, above deception, above enemies, above sorrow, above grief. If you want to go somewhere, if you want to rise up, see this is who you got to rise with to be a conqueror with Christ means you got to die with him retroactive grace means now that I'm connected I'm connected retroactively for the Bible says I am crucified with Christ you got to die with Christ the Bible says in Colossians 3 if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Well, you can't rise with him unless you go down with him. You can't get up with him unless you go down with him. God doesn't want you to jump on the bandwagon now that he's made it. But in order to get up, you got to get down. Mm. Somebody help me say get down Oh Lord Too many people trying to climb up And they never got down But every knee shall bow Every tongue shall confess If you get down God will raise you up Jesus got down Jesus went to the bottom Jesus suffered, bled, and died Jesus went into hell When he got to hell He got down mm. Somebody help me say get down Jesus Get down He was in the form of God Equal with the Father But he got down And when he went down into hell He brought up the prophecy Thou will not leave my soul in hell You can't leave something If you've never been there Which means Jesus had to go to hell I know that's a little heavy, but let me tell you again. I said, Jesus had to go to hell. You can't get up unless you go all the way down. Why are you going to hell, Jesus? Because I got to finish some business in hell. I whooped the devil in heaven, but he didn't get it. Look at somebody and tell him he didn't get it. And then Jesus whooped him again on Calvary, whipped him with nails in his hands, whipped him with nails in his feet, whipped him with a crown of thorns on his head, stomped him with spikes in his feet, but the devil still didn't get it. So Jesus said, I'm going to hell. I'm coming after you. Jesus went down and preached unto the spirits in prison. Preached in hell. You got to go to enemy territory. You got to conquer in the enemy's face. You got to eat from the table in the enemy's face. God will prepare a table before you in the face in the presence of your enemies you got to shout in the devil's face you got to praise him in the devil's face you got to testify in the devil's face not just at church but in his face say yes say yes say yes come on help me give god some praise here today hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah! Woo! I want you to know the devil got it that time when Jesus went down into hell and took back the keys of death and hell and then led a parade Colossians chapter 2 says that he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them open. That's in your Bible, Colossians 2. You'll read it when you get home. He spoiled principalities and powers. That means not only did he conquer them, but he made a show of them openly. Sometime you got to show out. Woo! 
Come on, help me look at somebody and tell them sometime you got to show out. Come on, clap those hands and give God some praise. I said sometime. That's what Jesus did. He went to hell and showed out. And on his way out of hell, he was so confident in his victory. He started handing out gifts. Some apostles prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Do you know what your gift is? Come on and lift those hands and say, Lord, thank you for my gift. Come on, tell him again, thank you for my gift. Now the Bible says, stir up the gift that is in you. Stir up your anointing. Stir up your power. You got it? Stir up your witness. Stir up your testimony. That's why God put us out here. He's stirring us up. Isn't that amazing? How God stirs us up. Come on, help me praise him. I know he's here today. I feel his glory. I feel his anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, help me to tell him. Thank you, Jesus. We are moving from victory to victory. I want you right now to anticipate your next victory. I want you to think about what God is going to use you to trample under your feet next. He's not through using you. He's not through anointing you. I want you to realize it's not in the rearview mirror. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize high calling of God in Christ Jesus. My greatest victory is yet to come. I need somebody to talk to me right there. Come on, testify. Look at somebody and tell them, my greatest victory is yet to come. Say it again. My greatest victory is yet to come. Now help me give God a shout on that. Glory! Glory! This is Bishop J. Lewis Felton thanking you for joining us for the Mount Airy Kingdom Worship Experience. May you continue to partner with us as we share the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. We love you in Jesus' name.